Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom. Yeah, beloved brothers and sisters, uh, I do believe that we are touching a brand new subject today uh, in uh, this uh, uh, YouTube. And I'm so happy that uh, Patrick uh, gave me insight in what God is doing in his life and how he has seen things that we never saw before such so clearly. Yeah. What is blocking each one of us to break through into the fullness of what God has prepared for us. And so he wants to share some of the experiences or, or some of the revelations he received from the, from the followers of Jesus Christ, from his disciples, from his apostles, and how they had to go certain steps yeah. and take certain risks in order to get into the fullness of what God had prepared for them. So please listen to it, and, um, and it will be only in English, but pass it on. I think every one of us has a calling that is far beyond from what we can imagine. But we are the problem. We are the blockage. Yes. We are hindering it from coming to pass. Yes. But I thank you so much for sharing this with me. And, and that, that gives us a, a clear insight in many lives that we realize there's much more to this life and the people don't get there. Where is the blockage? So, <coughs> Patrick, you, you let me know. Where do we read now? In Luke 6? Yeah, we can, uh, we can start in Luke five. Uh, chapter 5. Yeah. And let us read from verse 1 to verse 11. Yeah, <coughs> greetings. My name is Patrick Bruni. Yes. I greet you all. And I'm so thankful <coughs> to God for his grace that uh, is enduring every day. But also thankful that God gives us the grace to be able to transform our lives from that what we think is our lives to the life that actually he has designed for us, which is a long process for us to go. And so I'm so thankful <coughs> that God has given me an opportunity to come to real life, you know, to move away from the acquired self security and ideologies that, and move into his life. Therefore, I'm very grateful especially that God put such a woman of God like my mother. So I'm thankful for the last uh, 24 years of my life that I can say that I discovered one of the victories that I will ever walk through will only come if I choose obedience, which is a topic of our talk today. Obeying God beyond your own understanding, obeying God beyond your own fears, obeying God beyond your own strength and, uh, and securities then God gives you his fruit after you have surrendered everything. So I think let's learn from the disciples because right now I'm into that transformational season of my life whereby I have to cherish God more than everything else, whereby I have to repent of my past choices, where I have to make or repent of my past doings because I know his grace is enough. And my mother's consistently reminded me that you can walk to God every time <coughs> Never ever fail to stand up one more time and say, God, here I am, make me anew again. Mm -hmm. So, Mama, could you take us through a uh, look and then we see what the disciples did and <coughs> what was the fruit of their doing? Amen. Amen. Uh, it's in uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 1, 2. What did you say? From 1, let's go from verse 1 to verse 11. To verse 11. Hallelujah. <clears throat> On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for, for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we have toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and saying, depart from me, 
for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. <clears throat> and so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. <clears throat> From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. I think this is uh, <laughs> a message that for me has transformed me so much or a message that I have put myself before as a mirror and say, God, here I am. <clears throat> But how can I stand before you? I'm a sinful man. I have failed. I have failed you. I have failed your name. I have delayed your calling on my life because of my own doings. And here I land on this verse here. And I want us to go through this verse step by step now. So Mama, can you read again for us one, please? On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. So Jesus was already busy. The crowd was already, he already had people calling him. He already had the crowd pressing onto him. They want to hear him because they want to hear the word. They want to hear what he's saying. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. So you see, this is another group of people. One group of people is busy pressing in to find what do you have to tell us. And one group of people... Two of those ones, they are busy cleaning, they are doing their job, cleaning their nets and having two boats standing by. Jesus sees them and Jesus sees the boats. But now, listen what happened next there, what Jesus did. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. Jesus got into <laughs> the boat, but not not that he took the boat by force because he was Jesus, he was God, but he asked Simon, I would like to use your boat. I would like to go to the other side. And that's where uh, my revelation also started. And Jesus is coming to me right now and saying, Patrick, I would like to take this in your life and I would like to show you something that you don't know. So the man accepts and says, please, Jesus takes the boat. He goes into the lake. What does he do? He preaches because for him, his life is about giving the message of the Father in heaven. So he gives the message. I can imagine that Simon <laughs> and his brother, they were busy seated here and already saying, oh, please come on, finish because we want to, we, we want to go fishing. We want to get our fish. They are businessmen. These were businessmen. But you know what he does? Jesus never takes something we give to him and does not multiply it for our lives. Amen. When <clears throat> he finishes using the boat, he does not only say, thank you so much for allowing me to use your boat. What does he do? He gives them a command. And this is where in, it all begins. In verse 4. In verse 4. Then he says, And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, yeah. Put out into the deep, and let down your nets for a catch. Believe me without a doubt, the fishermen might have been already trying to do the fishing. So they said, okay, let's just clean up our nets and then later on we shall go in because fishing either is in the night or has a specific time. Uh -huh. But Jesus comes in his timing and said, okay, I'm done with using your boat. I would like you now to go deeper. Go deeper in the lake and cast your nets and you will catch. What is happening next is amazing. These are fishermen with the full experience. So they are saying, okay, this fisherman, what, this preacher, Jesus, what does he know? Simon answered, Master, yeah. we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. Uh -huh. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. And that's where the core of our message is. He says, Master, but we have been trying. There is no fish here. Uh -uh. Jesus says, wait a moment. I have given you a command. Go and cast. What does he say? He said, because you have commanded, I am going to take a step of faith to believe in you and I will do as you have asked. They go in 
And what happens? They acquire as much fish as they have never, ever seen. They signal to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. And when, but when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Because of his experience, he had already, he, he was very experienced, he was a fisherman, and say, this is not a normal situation, what is going on. There is where his revelation comes up and realizes this is not an ordinary act. This is a holy man of God that has given us the grace. Now, let us put these two men and Jesus and the situation of the fish in our own normal lives. Yeah. Here I am, by God's grace, I've gone to the university, I was picked from garbage, put into a house, given everything, acquired education, and now comes something that is challenging, which I believe also is hindering many of us to break through our callings and to break through into what God has prepared yeah. for us, the achievements of our lives. Remember that Jesus gave a command. First he asked, can I use your boat? He did. He didn't enforce himself on the board. No. We have the same experience in the desert. They asked Moses, what do you have? What did he say? <laughs> on a stick, just on a stick. I said, oh, on a stick? No, 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 no. Throw it down. The stick became what? A snake. It became a snake. What did the snake do? The snake swallowed all other serpent snakes that were there and so on. So Jesus is asking you, what do you have? Can you give it to me? I want to put it to multiplication and then I'm going to surprise you with a miracle that you've never seen. Now, <laughs> I'm telling you, as men, we achieve life. I have achieved education, I have a wife, I have a business. The challenge is, after they had finished fishing, they came to the shores with a multitude of fish. And what does Jesus say? He says, Follow me. Now, a fisherman, <laughs> as a businessman, definitely at the showers, I can imagine in their heads, they were saying, wow, now we are able to pay our electricity bills and pay our school fees and buy a new boat and buy a new... Day. But Jesus does not even consider how much they have achieved in their lives right there. Immediately he says, follow me, because now you will not just be fishermen of fish, but you will become fishermen of Men. Men. So you will fish men. So I am thankful that uh, the chronology of God is, uh, God is uh, calling in our life is not a force. It is a step-by-step -step situation. He calls Invitation. us. Yeah. Invitation. He calls us. He wants our obedience. And he wants us to not focus on what we have achieved in our lives. For example, Mama Maria, uh, I remember when I came back from the States from my theological studies, I was passionate about agriculture. And, uh, and I remember I came here in Vision for Africa. There was a big land down there, there was nothing. So you put me to challenge. You told me, make it fruitful. So we started out in agriculture. We grew uh, every day for 11 years of my life. I was waking up, going in the farm. So I had the cows and the, and the pigs and the goats and the chicken, fruits and everything. So I knew what I'm going to earn from these yieldings at the end of the month for 11 years. Yes. Yeah. So we get into these contracts. You pay every month rent for the land and so on. So I become part of what I am doing. I, I, I get actually, the right statement would be, I got possessed with what I am doing. So I put my identity and my security into that. A few years down the road, God calls me to a position of leadership and God says, and my mother says to me, okay, God has called you to serve, but you have to serve fully. Make your sort of like, like somebody going for a marathon. They don't carry nothing. Release everything. Let go of everything and align yourself for the call of God. <laughs> That's where it becomes a challenge. What does it mean? I have to let go of that. You have to give away the farm. You have to let go of everything to allow God use you in the moment. But let me tell you something. It is very hard to let go of something that you have already made your security in life. But I can promise you one thing. The more you are willing to let go and let God actually be your security and everything, the more God reveals to you what you have been missing. 
Yeah. And so how I am grateful that it is not how much I can uh, accumulate anymore in my life. I'm like you at the moment whereby I can say, God, take everything, take everything, take everything, even my children, even my, take everything, but put me to a place, put me into a whereby you can glorify yourself, whereby your name can be seen through me. And so it is my appeal to us as uh, men of God and women of God that obedience in Jesus Christ shall produce a lot of fruit. But before that happens, we have to look into ourselves, the subconscious. What are your fears? What are the things that are stopping you from not trusting God? What are the setups of your life which you have made that you're thinking, if I let this out, if I confess this to God, oh, I will be embarrassed. I have done so many mistakes in my life. I've, uh, I've done it all. Uh, my mother was with me before I got married. I introduced you to her almost six different girls. I mean, I have cheated her. She has forgiven me hundred times. I've done everything. Some things done out of not even knowing, being controlled by the subconscious. Something that we acquired in our childhood insecurities. So the more we are willing to let go of our insecurities in the hands of God, the more God is going to multiply us. And also be willing to step into the unknown, something that you don't have control over, but give him the control that he can control. I like your story, Mama. Uh, when God called you to come to Uganda, I love this story and I ought to tell it again and again that you shared with the people, you know, and they say, hey, God has called me, I'm going to Africa. What happened? They all announced you crazy. Yeah. They wanted to put me in a mental disease home. Maria is what? Is crazy now. She lost her life. She lost her mind. But you know, when I track back since 2003 until today, what God has put on ground by you giving up your American life, giving up your Austrian beautiful life, Austria is so beautiful, giving up the good holidays and maybe sweet retirements that you would have got in Europe and came here, and the fruit of that obedience today, we can testify about it and we can be so proud about it. You know, we can be shocked to thankfulness. Amen, amen. <laughs> and, and so um, the question is, are we to walk in obedience with the systems of the world or are we to walk in obedience with the call of God in our lives? Sometimes when God calls us, the voice is not so clear to us. Why? Because we have already set up a life around us that it, it obstructs everything that God is speaking. I've seen it in my life. My mother always told me, your calling is to worship the Lord. But I said, Mama, I need some money. I want to drive a good car. She said, no, trust the Lord and the Lord shall give you the needs. He shall meet all your needs according to his riches. But of course, as you know, you grow up yourself on the street. You have nobody to give you food. So you build up a kind of a security of I will not trust anything. I have to make sure that I have it in control. Let me tell you, um, we better do ourselves <laughs> an advantage of choosing God immediately when he calls us because then we are delaying ourselves from breaking into the real life. Amen. So I'm so grateful <laughs> that uh, through this small act or the obedience of Simon and Peter of just being able to say, okay, Jesus, you can take the boat and so on and says, okay, you go further. Go away from where you think you have the grip and let it go and go further on his command. He will make it a miracle in Amen. your life. And a shock. A shock. In a your holy, life. heavenly shock. A, a holy shock in your life. So, uh, for example, you know, uh, obedience is, is unbelievable. Uh, let me give you a testimony, a small one. Something that happened in my life, I think it was last year, um, my daughter. <laughs> I went to her room. I went to her room and I said, uh, Zoe, um, I want you to clean up your room properly. I went to put on my shoes. My daughter ran up in the closet. I don't know why she was running there. She found that I had not closed the drawers and some clothes were down. She came down again and told me, Daddy, can you go and clean up your closet also? Now, I had two choices in that moment. I either had to say, don't command me, Zoe. You cannot tell me I am your father. Or I had to shut up and run up and see why she's telling me. So I ran up to the closet fixed everything. I said, Zoe, come, 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 come and see. 
She said, then I took her down again and said, Zoe, you can now make up your room. And she did it in such a way that it was, it was good. Uh, yeah. Why am I sharing this uh, to you is I think as Christians, let us look so much onto ourselves and God, what can you do with my life? God, what can I let go? God, what can I give to you? Before we focus on somebody else, you know, I like the way you always say, you always say, I am nothing, I'm a beautiful zero. <laughs> I'm a beautiful zero, but with Jesus added to my life, I'm already 10. So in everything that we shall go through, there is one ingredient that is very important, obedience to the voice of God. It is better to trust in God than trusting in the chariots of men. Yeah. Can I read that scripture from? Yes, please. Acts 5.29. Oh, Acts 5.29. Yeah. It's somewhere else. Acts 5.29. Yeah. It says, Peter, but Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than man. We must obey God rather, rather than, than men. Man. Now, <laughs> this is something that has that, that challenged me to live with Mama Maria, you know. And some of you will read it in my book, which I'm writing. Um, because uh, this is a mother that tells you, go to the university. I went to the university studied the bachelor's in theology and did was a degree in, uh, in business. I fly back to Uganda. I sit behind. She starts to preach. She has not gone to college like I was. She has been in the University of the Holy Spirit all her life, you know. Then she starts to speak, and then I start to say, she speaks like my lecturers. She speaks like a doctor in theology or something like this. Then she comes down. She wants to start a project. The project is going to cost, let's say, one million euros. Uh, that experience I got to the high school, and uh, you have 20, 50,000 euros instead of a million. Then she said, no, the Lord has told me we have to start. Where is the budget? Where is the money going to come from? And she makes a statement. She says, the God who has given the vision shall also provide everything that is needed. I have watched over years how this faith, has created vision for Africa, how this faith has given her strength to walk and preach and uh, do the ministry, even when she's sick. So to me, I, uh, as I conclude, I, I, I want to say that uh, as Christians, as the people that are looking for God to do something with our lives for the kingdom of God, let us make obedience. I like the word in, uh, in German which say Gehorsam. 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 Uh, you go as you listen. That as we walk through Gehosh. Yeah. As you, you walk, always be able to have a pause in your life whereby you say, God, what are you saying now? I've personally made so many mistakes in life just because I went without stopping, just because I went with my own ego, with my own knowledge. I made deals that were a flop. I did these. I failed in uh, different things just because I didn't give myself a chance to pause and listen to the Lord as I went out to administrate. So let us allow ourselves to be obedient. Let us allow ourselves to surrender our securities and the things that we think this is our life mm -hmm. and see what God yeah. can do with our lives. And that means also all our securities, yeah. All our securities, all our securities. <coughs> I remember, can I, can I say uh, some, uh, I think 2004, 2005, uh, the, we had a financial situation. You didn't have cash. You had a few shillings. Then Pastor Semambo, who is our friend, comes and says, Mama Maria, I, uh, I just, I, we don't have food at home. You had little money you had. You had already told us that we should trust God and pray for the money. What did you do? You went to your bedroom, picked the money, we are seven boys at home, no food. You wanted to go shopping, and you, you gave the money to Pastor Semam. I remember my brother Richard asking you, Mama, what are you doing? You already told us you have nothing. And you said, no. I asked God, and he told me he shall provide. I should give this. Two hours later, you called us <coughs> and saying, God has deposited money. Money has come in for us to. This has remained in my mind. <coughs> To be able to give God what you think is what you are left with. What you think is your security. To be able to give it to God. And God multiplies it more and more and more. 
So God bless you, and uh, and and I think Mama can give uh, continue a little bit on that yeah. on, uh, the obedience and the fruit of obedience. But I think we have a long way to go, and God shall perfect us step by step if we remain willing, and also if we remain open to His calling in our lives. Yeah, shalom. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, <clears throat> there's a scripture, and it says, oh, "Unless we die, we will not." gain life yeah. <clears throat> and uh, you know uh, Galatians 2.20 is not preached enough in the churches mm. we preach come to Jesus mm. yeah, that's great yeah. invite him in. then you are a child of God but you need to mature in that childhood yeah. to become a, a, a proper vessel in God's hands Amen. and for that we need to be taken to the end of ourselves Amen. Self is the worst word in the whole yeah. language. The, the last uh, in German, you know, selbst mord, when you kill yourself. And it's all, what is self is not born of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And that has to go to the cross. And that's why uh, Paul preached Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Okay. It's no longer I who live, yeah. but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith Amen. of the Son of God, Amen. Amen. who loved me and yeah, who did everything for me. It needs to become a chikumi kuchikumi of in uh, Uganda, hundred percent, hundred percent, giving yourself to God, trusting Him, Amen. relying on Him, uh, uh, just being at His disposal, Amen. and then you go from miracle to miracle, from Amen. strength to strength from from ad, adventure to adventure, from joy to joy. Amen. So then this is then a victorious life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So and, and you know, uh, when I think of those disciples, God did not even choose Pharisees that were yeah, he very went. high theologians. Yeah. These were men that were working with their hands. Amen. They Amen. yeah. But he trained them in the uh, not in religion but in faith and life. in in life, every, in every situation. And so uh, uh, I think many people are hindered from breaking through into their heavenly calling, how God sees them, by trusting too much in what is around them. Self, yes. In mm. self. You know, how can I support myself? Where will I live? What will my future be? What will my neighbors say? How much can I save for the future? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All these things have to go to the cross Amen. and we have to depend on God. And I promise everyone that listens here, I have lived this lifestyle now for quite a few years, but the heavenly shocks that God is giving you, uh, it's amazing. You just, uh, most of the time you say, Lord, you are absolutely more than I ever expected mm. because you beat all my expectations. Mm. If my expectations are there, you, you come with this here. So, and you know, the best is yet ahead of us. Amen. The, I mean, this world is so beautiful, but I only look here at this garden, you know. Amen. It's, it's a, an expression of, of very beautiful nature. I, I learn every, every leaf on these trees is different, you it's know. Unique. And, yeah. yeah, and then how, how our people built here these houses with this creativity. But this is just a little foretaste. Amen. Because he says, no eye has seen, no, ears, no ear has heard, it has not entered in any heart what God has love. prepared for those who love, love him, him and love and trust him. Amen. 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 And so I advise everybody, don't try to build your life on what you can understand. Where you think, well, did he save this, this, you know. No, trust your God with all your heart Amen. and allow him to do with him what you to do with you, allow him to do with you what he, what wants. he wants, where he wants, how he wants, when he wants. Allow him also to reduce you to zero. Mm. But Christ is in us. We are the hope of glory. Amen. We have reached the highest goal of provision, of blessings, of favor, of love. Amen. 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 And so, Patrick, I am so thankful. Uh, that that you emphasize that so many people don't reach their calling because they are afraid of letting go what they have. They are afraid of the unknown. Yeah. 
they think with me, God cannot do that. Yeah. I'm not worthy it. I'm not worthy of yeah, it. Just like, was it Simon who said, depart yeah. from me, I'm a sinful man. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and uh, I quote myself personally in uh, such a bracket many times whereby I say, no, God, yeah. I think I've done wrong. I, but then God, God tells me, hey, you're my son. Just confess, confess, repent, come to me and change your ways. And I think, Amen. And I think the grace is enough. Amen, yeah. Amen, Amen. Amen. Well, ever we are still finding our security yeah. anywhere else outside our love relationship with God, we are blocked. Yeah, that's right. And, and God will not be able to help us to get where he wants us to be because we hold back. Yeah. We hold back. Uh, we are still a little bit up here. Mm -hmm. We mind. want to have a grip on God, Amen. but God wants to have a grip on us. Amen. Amen. And when God has a grip on us, I tell you, dear ones, the then you are big. in the best hands, you are in the hands of the greatest lover, the best bridegroom, and he's coming soon. Amen. Are you ready? Shalom, shalom. <laughs>